this is Brother Ben. It's Bhante Ven Rakita Samanera. And today we're going to have a look at a topic, the 10 signs of an obsessive compulsive personality disorder narcissist. This article is taken from Dr. Todd Grande. He is a licensed professional counsellor and psychotherapist. And I am a Buddhist seminarer for 12 years who has a diploma in Buddhist psychotherapy. So let's go straight in. The 10 signs of an obsessive compulsive personality disorder narcissist from Dr. Todd Grande. So he says, today's question asks if we can describe the obsessive compulsive narcissist. So we're gonna look at this question by looking at the 10 signs of the obsessive compulsive narcissist. When talking about mental health topics and the construct of being obsessive compulsive, this can get a bit confusing because there are two mental disorders that use the same term, obsessive compulsive. There's OCD, a disorder that has intrusive thoughts and obsessive behaviors. In theory, that is to satisfy the anxiety caused by those thoughts. OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, this is a disorder characterized by perfectionism and rigidity. When I'm talking about the obsessive compulsive narcissist, I'm really talking about a mixture of obsessive compulsive personality features and narcissism. So this is more related to OCPD as opposed to OCD. When conceptualizing maladaptive personality structures, we often think the 10 personality disorders listed in the DSM. These 10 disorders are divided into three clusters, A, B, and C. These represent an extreme manifestation of certain personality types. Extreme grandiose narcissism is captured by the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder, which is a cluster B personality disorder. And extreme obsessive compulsive traits are captured by OCPD, which is a cluster C personality disorder. The narcissism can combine with any of the other personality disorders. So in addition to the obsessive compulsive narcissist, there are narcissists who have antisocial paranoid, borderline, histrionic, dependent traits, all types of different combinations. All these different types of narcissists present in a different way, but they share a destructive capacity for relationships. For example, the dependent narcissist taxes a romantic partner with over-reliance, and a paranoid narcissist drives away with constant accusations. The obsessive compulsive narcissist destroys relationships through intensity and unwillingness to compromise in any situation and a desire to dominate. With that in mind, let's move to the 10 signs of an obsessive compulsive narcissist. From this point on, we're going to refer to the term obsessive compulsive by using the initials OC. So, sign number one. An extreme focus on small negatives. So, for example, looking at a husband and wife. The wife is going to the store and the husband wants five different items from that store. The wife only buys four of them because one is not available. The husband harps on the missing item for days, not satisfied. Every problem seems to connect to that missing item, even when there's no logical connection. 
the example Dr. Todd Grande gives is this. Let's say the missing item was a bag of potato chips. The husband's getting ready for work, goes out to his vehicle, but he forgets his laptop. He blames the wife for this. If I only had that bag of chips, I would not have forgotten my computer. The wife's perceived imperfection. Her failure to pick up an item that wasn't available now becomes an excuse for every mistake the husband makes. So he forgets about the four items that she did get and he puts all his attention on that one missing item. Sign number two. The motive for the perfectionism is driven from two directions. The narcissism drives the pers person to accept their perfection. The narcissist desires to be and believes they are a perfect entity. The OCD drives them to do things perfectly. This is very much based on circumstances. Individual actions that are executed without error, so essentially, with the OCD narcissists, they must prove that they are perfect. Regular narcissists believe it without any evidence, but the OCD narcissist holds themselves to a higher standard. They must actually perform perfectly in addition to just believing they are perfect. In a sense, the OCD narcissist has a lower level of self-confidence. Sign number three, this is the desire for perfect knowledge. Now, getting things right is important, but the OCD narcissist wants to get things right, even if being right or wrong is not actually important in a given situation. For example, the OCD narcissistic daughter asks her father if he can pick her up after soccer practice. The father is five minutes late and the daughter wants to know why. He explains that there was an accident that was slowing traffic on his way to pick her up. But she wants to know where the accident was, what type of vehicles were involved, what caused the accident, what she wants to have a perfect understanding of what made her wait an extra five minutes. It's also a way of punishing the father for being late. In her mind, he's going to think twice about being late again. Sign number four, the desire for approval. The regular narcissist wants approval for being the greatest person who ever lived. The OC narcissist wants approval for being right. Put them together and you have a person who wants to be admired because they inherently deserve it and because they are always correct. So there are more reasons to admire the obsessive compulsive narcissist from their point of view. Let's call them OC narcissists for now. This leads to a real sense of being offended on the part of the OC narcissist. When somebody doesn't believe that they are perfect in their minds, they have so many reasons that only somebody illogical would fail to understand their greatness. The fifth sign, they must make something that's technically wrong into something that is right. Let's say that an OC narcissistic wife purchases a vehicle she pays too much for. She asks the husband to offer his opinion about how much he paid and he says, well, it looks like you paid about $500 too much for that vehicle. The wife is unable to admit that she paid too much. She searches on the internet for similar vehicles for sale until she finds a few that are in the price range that she paid not realizing that the price they are asking may be different than what somebody actually pays and not realizing that there may be differences in those vehicles that she's not taking into account. 
So again, it's they must make something that's technically wrong into something that's right, twisting it round. In a sense, she's justifying her purchase. Instead of actually searching for the truth, in reality, she doesn't want to know the truth. She just wants to get satisfaction from that feeling that she has to be correct. Sign number six. The OC narcissist is extremely sensitive about their intellect. Now, most narcissists believe they are smart. But because they are so great, if they're not absolutely the smartest person ever, they can live with that. Interestingly, they tend to discount the necessity of being any more intelligent than they actually are. For example, they might say that person is too smart for their own good. I'm glad I'm not that smart because I would have all the other problems that go along with it. But the OCD, the OC narcissist, however, needs to be the smartest person ever, which aligns with the idea of never being wrong. Their intellectual integrity can't be challenged externally or internally. So criticisms from others and thoughts of self-doubt can cause this type of narcissistic, excessive anxiety. Sign number seven. The need to be special takes on a different feeling. A regular narcissist believes they are special without any evidence to support it. But the OC narcissist needs a little bit more. A pause. So the pause is to go back and do this line again here, just before sign number seven. So criticisms from others and thoughts of self-doubt can cause this type of narcissist excessive anxiety. Continuing on. They often develop esoteric or idiosyncratic interests, specializing in a very specific area of a discipline so they can become the best in that small area. For example, a regular narcissist may have an interest in something like history, but the OC narcissist is interested in one specific event, like one battle or one war, an event so narrow they can claim a perfect knowledge of it. This always allows the OC narcissist place to go when they feel trapped in a conversation. They have this small area of knowledge that few people would have. They can appear like an expert, especially in the short run. But in the long run, people see that the knowledge they have is limited to that one area. Sign number eight. Other people's perceived shortcomings explain their flaws. If they can't find something right in themselves, they can find something wrong in you. Either route can lead to satisfaction for them. For example, a husband and wife have a long conversation in front of a friend. The friend comments to the husband that he felt like the husband talked too much in that conversation and didn't really give his wife a chance to say anything. Instead of accepting this constructive criticism, and monitoring the ebb and flow of conversations he has, he immediately starts to look for a flaw in the wife that will explain why he talked too much. He watches a conversation between his wife and their son. The wife doesn't really say a lot. He deduces that he is not actually too talkative. It's his wife that doesn't talk enough. The husband now feels a sense of satisfaction because he has explained what others see as a shortcoming of the OC narcissist. 
This is as good as actually fixing the problem. Sign number nine. The OC narcissist must end the conversation or, or interaction with a victory. They must have the last word. The OC narcissist does not like to lose. Here I use an example of a man who's trying to negotiate the merger between his company and a smaller company. So in theory, he has an advantage in this negotiation. The smaller company seems to be coming out ahead with many of the terms that are being negotiated toward the end of the negotiations. The man asks for an unusual concession that the smaller company makes because it's not really an important concession. The narcissist feels that he has achieved victory. The last interaction was positive. He got his way. This is a good example of winning a battle that doesn't matter and going on to lose the war. And a good example of how the OC narcissist can be manipulative by exploiting that obsessive compulsive tendency. Sign number 10. A lack of precision comes. Sign number 10, a lack of precision becomes a source of criticism. Narcissists are often looking for a way to put other people down. Other people aren't smart enough, they're not attractive enough, their personality isn't good enough, they are wrong on a variety of issues. The OC narcissist does this as well. But they also add an additional method. They focus on a lack of precision as a point of criticism. For example, an OC narcissistic mother asks her son for the time and he says 8.15. She decides to look at the clock herself and sees that the time is actually 8.18. Most people would look at this three minute difference and think that this is in the margin of error for that expression a quarter past or a quarter of. So, but to the mother, this is not acceptable. The lack of precision means that she can now not only criticize the son's performance in reading time, but she can expand her criticism to a number of shortcomings. Narcissists don't need much of a reason to criticize in the first place. The OC narcissist doesn't really need any reason. They can simply just move their criticism down to a level of precision until they find what they believe is a mistake. Dr. Todd Grande says, in my clinical experience, I've noticed that OC narcissists tend to alienate people fairly quickly. It's one thing to interact with somebody who believes they're better than you. It's another to deal with somebody who provides a high level of detail about why they're better than you and provides a lot of detail about why you are worse than them. In one sense, relationships are developed when one person allows another person to make mistakes. But in a relationship with an OC narcissist, there is no room for being a human. OC narcissists sometimes succeed in work environments because their perfectionism can be confused with productivity, but they struggle to create meaningful romantic and family relationships. So these are the thoughts uh, from Dr. Todd Grande on the obsessive compulsive narcissist. So thank you very much again. This has been uh, Bante Van Rakita, also known as Brother Ben, on the subject of obsessive compulsive narcissists.